Okay, in this video we're going to do an actual example of a one-way analysis of variance between subjects. At this point, hopefully you've watched, you should have watched the video uh, for the background. Hopefully we've talked about this in class and you're ready to actually see how you calculate this on your own. So, or by hand. So let's, for this example, we're going to see if caffeine, that's our independent variables, caffeine level, will speed up uh, reaction time, which is our dependent variable. And so we're going to give zero milligrams, 20, so control group with, that gets no caffeine, 25 milligrams per kilogram uh, of caffeine and 50 uh, milligrams per kilogram in our third group. These are different subjects and this is our reaction time measure. Now I've just cooked up these data to be very simple so you can see how the uh, analysis of variance works and also you'll see that there's no overlap in these groups so of course we're going to have a difference here. Uh, but this is just a, a arbitrarily generated or a, you know, generated example, it's not always going to be like this, but this hopefully will illustrate um, how, how to do this analysis variance in a simple way. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to sum up each column, right? That's what I would do, sum up the columns, right? So sum of x, we're going to get sum of x. And if we want the mean, we take sum of x and we divide by n. So with 14 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, we're going to get 3.5. 30 divided by 4, 7.5. 46 divided by is 11.5, right? Um, now, to get the grand mean, we would add up all of these numbers, so 2 through 13, so all of these numbers, remember our grand mean is the average of all of them, so 2 through 13, and you divide by the total number, so we have 4 times 3 or 12 people, so we'd add up this sum of all of this and divide by um, 12, and you're going to get 7.5. Now, as it turns out in this, go away, and as it turns out in this example, the grand mean and the mean of our second group are the same number. It'll almost never be that way. Uh, just It worked out that way because of the data that I've put into this particular example. So the next thing that we'll need is our total sum of squares. Remember our total sum of squares, we take each score and we subtract it from the grand mean and we're going to square it and then we're going to add them up. So our grand mean here is 7.5. So that's in each one of these things. And we take the first score, so which is 2. We subtract 7.5, so you see that term right there, 3 minus 7.5, 4 minus 7.5, and 5 minus 7.5. So this first row here represents the first group. So the next group is on the second row, so you have 6, right, 7, 8, and 9 minus 7.5. And then, of course, the last row here represents the last group, 10. So I just substituted in the formula. I haven't done any math yet. So the next thing you want to do is subtract each one of these before we square them. And so that's this value right here. Okay. Then we're going to square everything. So we square everything. And then you add it up and you'll get 143. So there's nothing really difficult there. Again, just tedious and you have to be careful and neat because it's very easy to make a mathematical error when you're doing this by hand. Careless mathematical error. So the next quantity we need is sum of squares between groups. And so for the sum of squares between groups, what we're going to do is take the mean of each group, subtract it from the grand mean. Remember the grand mean was 7.5. We're going to square it and we're going to weight it by the size of the group. Now each of our groups has the same weight, which is 4. Each group had four, four observations, four people in those groups. So it's going to be a constant of 4 for each one of those terms, right? So the group mean for the first group was 3.5. Substituting in there, that's the grand mean 7.5. 7.5 was the second group mean, grand mean. 11.5 was the mean of the third group, grand mean. So now it's just a matter of sort of reducing this down. So we do the subtraction and the parentheses first. And you can see that this middle term is going to fall out because they were the same value. Uh, all right, let's get that. Um, and then, so we have minus 4 squared, 16, 4 squared, 16. And so you add those up, you get 128. Okay, sum of squares within groups is the next thing that we need. Uh, so we're going to get this by taking each value of that group in each observation in that group, subtracting it from its respective group mean. So we're going to have three of these things because we have three groups. So I've listed them on each individual line. So this first line represents the first group. So 2 was our first observation. 3.5 was the first group mean. Then we had 3 minus 3.5, 4 minus 3.5, 5 minus 3.5. And so this line represents how each score in that first group varies from its group mean of 3.5. We do the same thing for the second group. Now the scores change because we have 6, 7, 8, and 9. 
and also the mean changes because we have the second group mean. We're going to use the group second group mean, which is 7.5. It's not the grand mean here. I know that's confusing. The third group is 10, 11, 12, and 13 in our data, and the group mean there was 11.5. So that's where all of these numbers come from. The next step is, of course, to, to um, reduce the parentheses here, do the subtraction. So we've done that there. Then we're going to square everything, and then we add it all up, and you get 15. Now, if you've done this properly, your sum of squares between groups and within groups should add up and be the total sum of squares, or 143, and it checks out. Now we need some degrees of freedom uh, for each of these things. So degrees of freedom, total degrees of freedom is the total number of scores minus one. We had 12 scores in our total sample. Minus one, we had 11. We had three groups, so we have two degrees of freedom there. And each group had three degrees of freedom, right? So it's four observations in each group. So four minus one is three. And it's the same for each group, so you multiply it by three, and you're going to get nine. So we could go ahead and look up our critical f here and the critical f with two right two between them, and nine degrees of freedom is 4.256 so that's the critical f that we have to exceed in order to reject the null hypothesis so we're almost done we have to get our mean square and we get our mean square by taking our sum of squares between groups which was 128 dividing it by the degrees of freedom between groups which was two so that's 64 we need our mean square within groups, sum of squares within groups, 15, degrees of freedom within groups, 9, and that's 1.667. And then our f value is equal to the mean square between groups divided by mean squares within groups, 64 over 1.667, or 38.392. And we could put these in a source table, right? And a source table shows you the source of variability. So we have a source that's due to our independent variable, caffeine. We have a source that's due to our error, right? We'll talk more about that in, in class. Uh, and then we have our total source of variance. So this represents, the caffeine represents um, the source of variability, which is between groups. Within groups is the error, and of course we have our total. And so those values, so this would be total sum of squares, sum of squares within groups, sum of squares between groups, degrees of freedom within groups, degrees of freedom with, uh, between groups, mean square and f and so on, right? And of course, you can read the uh, handouts and we can turn this into a sentence by saying the analysis of variance revealed that caffeine affected reaction time. You have your F and it's underlined if you're writing it by hand, italicized if you're typing it, uh, degrees of freedom between, degrees of freedom within, the F value that you obtained, and then whatever your P value is. So in the next um, video, what we will do is we will uh, begin to talk about um, the analysis of variance in more conceptual terms.